Hey, this is Wyatt, and in this video, we're going to look at the origin story and specifically how to use your Canon M50 in a simple setup and some tips and tricks to easily capture your origin story so that you can then use that origin story in different product videos on your about page, anything, any offer that you're launching. It basically gives you a behind the scenes look at your motivations, why you got started, how you got started, and it gives people kind of a greater know, like, and trust factor. It can all be simply done using mostly what you already have, especially if you've been following along with this series. Check it out. Okay, so this works very simply. What you're doing is you're using your Canon M50 with a shotgun mic, but you're gonna be upgrading your audio just slightly. You don't have to, and in fact, you can just use the shotgun mic. Let me show you uh, an example between using the shotgun mic on your camera versus having it on a boom. I'm gonna show you an inexpensive product you can get to achieve that result. But first, let's look at the audio samples. Here's the audio with the camera and just the shotgun mic. This is basically what it sounds like with the mic on the camera itself instead of being on the boom. And you can really tell a big difference between the two because obviously you're much further away from the camera. So if you can have a setup like this, then you're gonna be much better off with your audio. Okay, now here's the audio with the shotgun mic, only this time it's gonna be on a boom and right overhead, so it's much closer and you get significantly better audio. There I was doing search engine optimization, and although it was great, I was getting burned out by the whole process. And for only 10 bucks more, you can basically get better audio. So I have a link in the description for the cord that you're gonna to wanna to get to make this work. Now, if you've been following along the series, then you're already gonna be using one of the tools, which is the boom mic stand. We use that in the video, using the Canon M50 to film uh, overhead. This time we're gonna use the boom though for what it's intended for. The only other thing you're gonna need besides the cord is an adapter so your hot shoe can fit to the adapter you've got on your boom arm. Then, the only thing you're gonna need to do is figure out where you're gonna sit and the best lighting you're gonna get. Now, if you don't have any natural light, then obviously you're gonna wanna use some auxiliary lights and then the expense goes up a little bit. So definitely use natural light if at all possible, even if you have to sacrifice a little bit of maybe the cinematic look that you're going for. You can always filter and post, but the thing of it is, even then, then a lot of people aren't gonna notice. Unless you put it side by side with something that's a little more cinematic, hopefully they're gonna be caught up in what you're saying and your content, and not necessarily how cool it looks. Your minds will vary, of course. Better get your videos out than try to get them all perfect, cinematic looking, and then 10 years later, finally publish a video. You're gonna be setting up your lighting, and that, that's a whole other video, but you do want to get some good lighting, and then you're gonna set up your boom arm, and I'll show you really quick how this is set up. Okay, this is a very simple setup. You'll see I've got the boom stand here, and it goes um, from the camera itself, the uh, cord goes down to the ground and then over to the boom, and then over and across, and then it plugs into the shotgun mic. Now, let me show you a quick close-up of that. You'll see, I, I didn't have the adapter yet, so uh, all I did was place this over and hook it on the existing adapter that you would use for your camera. And it works. To make sure uh, the mic wouldn't fall and bust if I happen to bump it accidentally, I just took a, um, a twisty and uh, wrapped it through and then twisted it around. And that worked just fine. As long as it didn't, you know, touch the mic, which you don't want to anyway, um, you get that set up and, and you're fine. Uh, definitely, uh, it's worth getting the adapter, but if you don't have one and you want to use it right away, um, this is a quick uh, little hack you can use. The only thing extra uh, you could put in, into place is maybe a sandbag or a bag of rice to keep the boom mic uh, from falling over if you happen to bump it. Because at this point, the boom mic is at its outermost extension upwards. And so it, it can be a little bit top heavy and putting that rice in the bottom of it or some sand bags is gonna help it uh, you know, stay on the ground. Without so it's a simple setup. And so what you really wanna do is get yourself comfortable. And here's a couple tips for that. First, you're gonna wanna have your app set up so that you, you can actually use your iPad or your phone as an external monitor so you can see what you look like um, rather than from a distance and you can get your focus point and make sure you're focused. You should be because, because the camera should kick in for you. But in case it doesn't, you can use the remote app. It also helps you just kind of stop and start. Sometimes when you're you're going and you just want to stop and think for a second, but you don't want to break, have to get up and da, 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 do all that. So having the remote app, remote app you can stop you can jot down a note or two, and then you can start and keep on going. That's pretty helpful. But the other part of that is, 
to have some bullet points set up. So you, you have a quick page of bullet points that you can kind of glance at and get to what point you want to make next or what part of the story you want next. These are all based on questions you people might ask you about how you got started, um, you know, what kind of obstacles you ran up against and so on. If you want a complete list of the questions you can ask, plus other, some, some other tips and tricks, there's a download below in the description. Of course, if you're part of the series, which you can sign up for down below, then you'll automatically get that download. The key then is just to have some bullet points uh, look at them and pretend like you have one of your best friends sitting on the other side of that or someone asking you questions. You're going to have your bullet points and you're going to just be talking normally. And if you want, I highly recommend doing some Facebook Lives. These are short lives. It, it can help you get over your fear of being on camera. And really, it helps you flow a lot more. I do it on a regular basis so that I don't lose some of that edge. Because when you're filming on uh, camera, you're always thinking, oh, that could be better, so I'll just stop and start and do it again. When you're live, you can't do that. You have to keep on talking. When you get in the habit of just keeping on going with what you're saying instead of stopping and starting all the time, it really helps dramatically uh, getting your videos out there, uh, having less editing time, and just having a better flow overall. So I highly recommend doing some Facebook Lives on a regular basis and just get into you know doing those for like five, 10 minutes, maybe two to five minutes if you're just starting out, but something where you're sharing some information, um, you're sharing some ideas or anything you want to that's entirely familiar to you so that it's much easier to just talk off the cuff. That gives you over some of the apprehension you might feel in front of the camera. Now, you'll always be improving. <laughs> Here's one little trick you can use when you're doing your Facebook Lives. Do your Facebook Live and at the end of it, watch it over again and pick one thing, only one thing. I know there'll be a myriad of things and when I'm watching my Facebook Lives, I always find a number of things that I wanna improve, but just pick one and only one to improve the next time you do a Facebook Live. And when you do this on a regular basis, then you'll find you'll incrementally change and the compound effect will actually kick in for you. Really, really helpful to just do this on a regular basis and then you'll get a lot more comfortable being in front of the camera. But regardless, you do want to have some bullet points. Some people will use scripts and although that can be helpful and there are apps that you can actually set up on your uh, iPad that that basically do the script and as you're talking, it will keep scrolling for you uh, so, so that you can actually have everything written out and you can have, have a setup where you're, it looks like you're looking at the camera but you're looking through a box and you're seeing the words uh, through that box. It, it, there are simple setups for that, but I highly recommend not doing those for the most part. There are occasions where it can come in really handy where you want the exact words, but for the most part, it's much better to actually have some bullet points to have down what you wanna say and just glance at your bullet points and keep going. Glance at your bullet points and keep going. In the editing, you can cut out that part where you glanced at, not a problem. Again, um, it is helpful to have the app because if you have to do longer pauses, then you can actually use the app to just pause, look, gather your thoughts, and then keep on going. I wouldn't recommend doing this too much because you because you can get into kind of a perfection cycle where you're saying, oh, oh, I gotta stop. And then you just keep stopping and stopping and stopping. It's kind of that effect where if you can do it, it becomes this crutch that you use all the time. Use it sparingly, stop, gather your thoughts, and keep going. If you find yourself sopping too much, then pretend like you're actually <laughs> talking live to someone and it'll get you to flow through. So those are some helpful tips. And the questions you use, again, there's a download below. But regardless, you want to convey with honesty from your heart, you know, kind of like why you got started, your motivation for having the offers that you do have, for having the business you do have, and it really resonates when people, when you really ground it in what you really believe in, it really helps people to understand you, know, like, and trust you a lot more than if you than if you just have a landing page, and about page, and offer without a video that kind of gives you a little bit behind the scenes. For the most part, you're going to use the voiceover more than you're just going to be using uh, seeing yourself on camera. You're going to be showing yourself in action, um, walking, talking to other people, any number of things. You're going to use that audio throughout your, your story or your video but it's helpful to have those moments where you're talking to the camera and then um, switching that up to you're walking and talking to other people and in action typing and whatever else you might do. Altogether, it produces a sweet video that you can use in a lot of different ways. If you found that helpful, be sure to give it a like 
and subscribe down below to the action series. We've got a couple more videos in that series that helps you create videos, text, and images for your landing pages and for your funnels and more. So check it out down below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you next time.